Hi everyone, as you all know, my name is Lady Jasmine C. And today I want to say thank you to everybody, most of all those who had faith in me, who believed in me, who patiently waited till this day for me to come and speak on behalf of myself. To all the good Nigerians out there who during this trying period showed their immense support by checking up on me, calling to know how I'm doing. I want to say thank you to everybody. So today I'm going to be talking about what has transpired this entire time. The past three months has been, I can't say it has been hell, but in every situation, I want to say, I want to give thanks to God. I said I was not going to talk about this issue until Daddy gets back to his feet. And glory be to God, he's been discharged and recuperating. Um, a lot has happened, not just the event of the past few months. A lot has happened, and I would like to share more light on how I got involved, how things got to this point. And I'm not talking because I need people to sympathize with me. No, that's not the essence of this. I'm talking because I feel like I have been abused. I have been used. And I hope you guys are patient enough to at least listen to the entire story. Because it means a lot to me for people to know what really transpired, what really happened. Then if after listening to me, you feel like, oh, I'm wrong. Fine. I'll let I'll leave the judgment to you people. So how did I get involved in all this in the first place? Um, firstly, how did I get involved with this family? The John O'Kafo family, Mr. Ibu family. The first and most important question I get all the time from people, mostly in my comment section, is Oh, don't she have a family? Don't she have parents? Uh, leave this family alone and all of that. I would like to start addressing from those kind of comments. So many years ago, my dad passed on me, so rest in peace. He was in the Nigerian army. He was a very good friend to Mr. Ibu, who is now a father figure in my life. When my dad passed on, Mr. Ibu himself was at the barrier. Ever since then, he has played the role of a father figure in my life. Not for once have I ever needed somebody as a father that he was not there for me. So fast forward to 2018, I left the country. I left Nigeria. And then I went to look for greener pasture outside the country. Things were working out for me. I was doing good. I was doing fine. Later on, I relocated to Cyprus where I was studying law. Fast forward to 2020, Daddy started, Daddy in person of Mr. Ibo, started writing me on WhatsApp, requesting for financial assistance. I was really surprised because before I left this country, he was doing well. If not, if he wasn't at the peak of his career, he was doing absolutely well. He has exotic cars. Everything was okay for him. So in 2020, when he started reaching out to me that he needed money for certain things, I was really surprised. Certain times I would send 50000 5000 2000 as much as I can. I have friends then in Cyprus that can attest to it. I think I have one friend, Ventura, Another friend, Otonye, these are people I know that can attest to it because then, even when I don't have as much, I would borrow from them or I would get from them to send to him. So at some point, it was getting, it was quite disturbing because I know when I left this country, he was doing very, very okay. I started asking questions. I asked him, what exactly is happening in your life right now? For you to be asking for the least 50,000, 10,000, 5,000, are you sure everything is okay? That was the first time he mentioned to me that he was sick and he was in Abuja. 
I then asked him, how about your wife? How is the children? How is everybody doing? It's been long since I heard from any of them. He said, uh, his wife is in um, his wife is in Lagos. That he has been in Abuja for close to two years now. And I was like, if you're sick, the best place to be is your home in Lagos. Why Abuja? He didn't really say much. So I told him to send me his wife's number that I would like to hear from her. It's been a while. I'd like to hear from her. Let me know what's happening in in their life and all of that. Let me also understand why he was asking for those kind of financial help if things has really gotten that bad. Because it's I was in shock. It also surprised me. So he later sent her number. I called her. I asked her how she was doing. She said everything was not well. I could remember that day. She The first day I contacted her after a very long time, she said everything is not well that her husband has left the house for over two years. He has abandoned the children and everything. I was surprised to hear that from her. And then she said that that, that very day, she started sending me videos. I think the last time they called me out that I was on, um, that the freeze life, I made reference to that. And I'm sure those evidence will still be on the live because I've changed my phone several and my phone formatted. So I might not have some of those evidence. But I still know that if I go to my iCloud, I will still see some of them, which I'll be posting while the, the live, the video goes on. So around that period, she was crying over the phone. When I asked her how things were going, she said um, that daddy in person of Mr. Ibu has left the house for over two years, abandoned her with the kids, that things were really bad for her. Even that day, she sent me a video of... Um, Nepal people cutting the light as of when I caught her. The Nepal people were there. She went to her car. She showed me her car that there was no fuel in her car. Her car was in a very bad condition. That in fact, that if I don't intervene, no, 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 no. The Nepal people will cut the light and there will be no light for the uh, there will be no light in the house. And the children were drinking Gary. That there was no food in the house for the children. That they were drinking Gary. That things has gotten real bad. That since daddy was in Abuja, he was not really in a very good state to help them and support her and for her she's not doing any work she, she according to her she, she married him she has not had, had any job she has not done anything she has no means of sustaining the family i mean she totally depends on him to be able to sustain the family and pay school fees for the children so i said okay ah me i'm in cyprus though i'm studying i showed her some of my school stuff i'm studying law this is where i am we're trying to catch up with each other and i told her this is where i'm right now but I'll try and see if I can raise at least 100000 and send to her so that she can sort out the little she can solve. She said, okay, that day I sent her 100000 The proof of that is what, the proof of that 100000 I sent her is in the live video, I, the previous live video I did with Daddy Freeze. I sent her 100000 naira. She called me, she thanked me, she said that 100000 will go a very long way for her. I said, okay, subsequently I will keep in touch. That was my first encounter with her after a very long period of time. But that was my first time talking to her after a very long period of time. After like after I left the country and everything. So from there, she started chatting me every day. We were, we were talking. Subsequently, she would send me for every single time we were having conversation. It was about the issues in the house and all of those things. And, and at the point, she started complaining to me that she's not able to reach daddy on the phone. In person of Mr. Ibu, that when she calls him in Abuja, he doesn't pick and all of that. So she asked me to call daddy on her behalf and talk to daddy that daddy should um, send something for her and the kids. And I've been supporting her in the little way I can during that period. My friends in Cyprus, I have, I can, I can call their names here. I'm sure they, most of them are still alive, although I've not in contact with some of them because I've left Cyprus for a while. They, they are aware, some of them are aware because when I don't have, I'll ask my friend, oh, please help me. I want to send, they know, they know how close I was to the family and how I have, I, how I was, always concerned about the family so at one point i said i was coming back to nigeria because at that point i was um dating someone and we're talking about getting married so i had a reason to come to nigeria and i told her, i said look i'm coming to nigeria when i come to nigeria we'll sit down and talk then we'll know how to solve some of all these issues that is going on you know 